Hello all, welcome to the lecture. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss the recent news related to the Place of Worship Act 1991. This act is in news and we have to see from the exam point of view that when we are talking about this Place of Worship Act, what is this act related for? Why was this act passed? And the places of Worship Special Provisions Act 1991 and the related provisions with this particular act. So recently, the Supreme Court is going to hear a challenge to the order of a civil court in Varanasi, which is directing a videographic survey of the Ma Shingar Gauri Thal in the Kashi Vishwana Temple of the Gyanwapi Mosque Complex. One thing to know over here is that this Gyanwapi Mosque that we are talking about, it is basically there are beliefs that this Gyanwapi Mosque has been built on the above the temple. So it was the ruler Aurangzeb who destroyed the temple and established a mosque on it. And people are saying that they have found a lot of evidence supporting this claim. So the whole issue is coming from here. So the principal contention is that the order of the Varanasi court, which was upheld actually by the Allahabad High Court, is clearly in, in are dictated by the Places of Worship Special Provision Act of 1991. So we have to know what is this Place of Worship Act, right? This is all more under, important to understand this Place of Worship Act. What was the reason behind that this act was passed? So see, this Place of Worship Act, it is described as an act to prohibit the conversion of any place of worship. Right, so any uh, uh, place of worship, it cannot be actually, you know, converted into any other thing. You cannot convert the temple into uh, a mosque or like that. So to provide, this act wanted to provide for the maintenance of the religious character of any place of worship. So as it existed on 15th day of August, that is when we got independence, 15 August, 1947. But within this act, we have to know one more important thing is there are a lot of exceptions to it. So when I'm talking about the exceptions, the disputed site at Ayodhya was exempted from the act. So due to this exemption, the trial in the Ayodhya case proceeded even after the enforcement of the law. So this place of worship act 1991, basic aim is just, just we talked about to maintain that religious character, religious character of the places of worship. So Ram Janmabhumi and the Babri Majjid dispute, it is actually exempted. Now, besides the Ayodhya dispute, the act also exempted one more thing that any place of worship, which is an ancient and historical movement or an archeological site, and that too covered under your ancient monuments and archaeological sites remains act of 1958. So any dispute that has been settled by the parties or conversion of any place that took place by acquiescence before the act commenced. So over here, the issues with uh, what are we seeing currently is it's a lot of issue, uh, a very serious issue, right? Because there is a fear that such kind of things in the country can lead to a lot of communal violence. So what are the provisions of the Places of Worship Act of 1991? When I'm talking about the provisions, see, this law was actually enacted by the parliament under the P.V. Narasimha Rao government in 1991, when the country was witnessing the Ram Mandir agitation. At that time, this law was enacted. Now, this law act that we are talking about, it basically freezes, freezes the religious character of a place of worship as it existed on 15th August 1947. That that now whatever is there, it is full and final and the religious character of the place cannot be changed. So the, if I talk about the cutoff date, the cutoff date was taken as 15th August 1947. So the act 
wanted to freeze the status of any place of worship and provide for the maintenance of the religious character of such a place of worship as on that day so it was intended to preempt new claims so that any group tomorrow you know cannot come that you know this particular thing is related to us or that so past status of any place of worship also and attempts they are attempting to reclaim the structure of the land on which they stood so it was basically hoped that the legislation would help the preservation of communal harmony in the long run so if i talk about section 3 of the act section 3 of the act prohibits the conversion of a religious place of worship or a section of a religious place of worship into a place of worship that to offer different religion there is another section over here section 4 of the act so what is the section 4 of the act related to basically all appeals suits or other proceedings with respect to converting the religious character of a place of worship shall end on the commencement of the act and no further fresh appeals can be allowed to be filled so one more thing that we have to know here that the place of worship act imposes a positive obligation on the state that the state has to maintain that religious character maintaining of the religious character is very very important of place of worship as it existed at the time of independence so what are the penalties under the act if i look at the penalties section 6 of the act clearly it prescribes a punishment of maximum of 3 years imprisonment will be there along with a fine can be charged for contravening the provisions of the act so that any cost if you disobey the act you will be you can punish for a maximum of 3 years plus as well as fine but lot of criticism this law has been challenged on the grounds that it bars judicial review so when i am saying judicial review is barred one thing to remember here is the basic feature of the constitution is judicial review and this act is said to be you know uh, imposing an arbitrary irrational cut off date that how can you do that and abridges the right to religion of most of the people such as hindus buddhists jains right so what are the supreme court's observation of the act if i talk about the court held that this act is basically a legislative instrument which imposed a non derogable obligation towards enforcing commitment to secularism so secularism is one of the basic features of our indian constitution also if i talk about the constitutional obligation the state has by enacting this particular law enforced a constitutional commitment and what are you are doing you are operationalizing its constitutional obligations to uphold the equality of all religions so this act is said to be providing the guarantee according to the supreme court to every religious community for the preservation of their places of worship as they existed on the day of independence that is 15th august 1947 so what is that basically so that any kind of injustice is not caused to anybody so there was a plea that was uh, filed to revisit the places of worship act 1991 and the grounds that are there is that it says that this particular act is arbitrary in nature the act has basically barred the remedies against illegal enrochment on the places of worship and pilgrimages and now hindus jain buddhist sikhs they cannot file suits or approach court under the article 32 that is you can article 32 is related to that you can file a writ in the supreme court and article 226 a written high court also that it is against the religious act the act violates the article 25 of the indian constitution the so article 25 talks about the freedom of conscience and free profession practice and propagation of the religion so there are lots of concerns of revisiting the act also that uh, revisiting the act would you know break faith of different communities and it can lead to nation into spiral of conflict and that should not happen in a in the largest democracy of the world and this is said to be against the liberal societal view 
so what is the road ahead or what is the way forward for this UN's alliance of civilization safeguards religious sites in line with universal declaration of human right and this supports member state in their effort to ensure that religious sites are safe so this plan that we are talking about is a global call to rally around the most basic tenets of humanity and solidarity so that you know the sanctity of the all religious sites and the safety of all worshippers should be maintained so we should not forget that above all above all we are a country and as a country we have a more responsibility towards each other so thank you with this we end the lecture here